Hi everybody, welcome to video number eight. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take the Landsat bands that you just downloaded and stack them into a single multi-band raster image. And to do that, we're going to use this tool in ArcMap called the Image Processing Window. And that tool is going to let us first clip all of these bands together very quickly. And then it's going to let us composite them back into a single multi-band file that we can use going forward. So I've got my ARC project ready to go here. And I, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, add those Landsat images, which I've got stored in my personal folder on GG Students. And here they are. Uh, I'm going to add band 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm only going to add one of the band 6's, uh, that's the first one, and then I'm going to add band 7. I'm not going to add band 8, the reason is because it's the panchromatic band, it has a different spatial resolution, so it doesn't make sense to really mosaic it or, or composite it with the other bands, because it has a higher resolution than they do. Alright, so I've selected those uh, 7 different bands, and I'll hit add and they're going to pop up on my screen. I'm going to choose not to make pyramids and I may have to tell it that for each band as it tries to load. So I'll just pause now and, and we'll get everything onto the project. Okay, so all the images are loaded now. Um, depending where you are, your computer may be slow and your computer is now grappling with about 500 megabytes of data. So my computer is suffering as it tries to draw all these different images. So I'm going to try to help it along by turning some of them off if I can. But it's not even going to really let me do that. Oh, yes it is. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to turn off as many of them as I can. Then I like to just collapse them so that I can see them more cleanly on the table of contents. So now with a little bit of patience, I've got my table of contents showing all the different bands, and I've only got one of them turned on, that's band one. If you look closely at it, you can see Lake Champlain coming right down the middle here. And we're going to be down in Middlebury, right in this area. So the first step is going to be to clip these images. Um, for this example, we only want to focus on a small area down by Middlebury, so we don't need this huge file. And there's a great clipping tool available in the Image Processing Toolbox. And this is something we're going to be using throughout this class. So get, get familiar with it. Uh, it's under Windows and Image Analysis. OK? Um, and what it does is it shows you all the different uh, files that you have up here at the top. And then it's going to let us manipulate those in different ways down here. So the first thing we're going to do is a clip. And in, in the easiest way to clip in the image analysis toolbox is to just zoom in to the area that you want to clip to. And it's literally just going to clip you out an image um, that matches whatever you can see on your screen. So I'm zooming in now into the Middlebury area. I'm going to try to get a different image so maybe we can see it a little bit better. Okay, that is a little bit, little bit clearer what we're looking at now. And I'm going to choose an extent, something like this, that has Snake Mountain over in one corner, and then has Lake Dunmore down in the lower right corner. Something like that looks about right. Snake Mountain, Lake Dunmore, and then you can see Highway 100 going up through Hancock over here. So that's a pretty good extent. Of course, this is Middlebury right here, if you're curious. So now we're going to bring back that image analysis window, and we're going to do some clipping. And one important thing is to highlight all of the images in this list. It doesn't matter if they're checked, but they have to be highlighted. I used Shift and highlighted them all. And now I can just go down to this Clip button. And I'll hit Clip, and it's going to actually clip all seven rasters. And it's going to bring up temporary rasters over in the table of contents. Now to reduce the memory load, I'm going to go ahead and remove 
these other large files from the table of contents. So I'll use Shift to highlight them, right click and just remove them. So now we've got um, fewer things in the memory. Okay, so now that they've all been clipped, and just to, just to show you what I mean by clipped, if we zoom out on these now, you can notice that the extent has changed. We've literally clipped out just that piece of the image. So those are much smaller files now. All right, so the next step is to actually composite these back into one file that contains all of these bands. This is also very easy to do in the image analysis window. So we're going to, again, use Shift to select all of our clipped images. And then we're going to go down and we're going to hit this button, which is the Composite Bands button. So I'll click it very quickly it produced this uh, file. Now this is a temporary file, it's only in memory. So I would like to make it permanent so that we can always use it later on and we don't lose it. To do that I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna choose data, export data, and then I'm gonna save this as a TIFF file in my GG students folder. So you can pretty much leave all these defaults at the default. Uh, the one thing you will need to, to check is that your output location is appropriate. Mine is set to my GG students folder. And then you'll need to give it a name. In this case, I'm going to call it uh, mid-2002 composite. And also, you're going to need to remember what bands are in here that you just stacked up bands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And they're going to be in that order. They're going to be stacked in whatever order they occurred in your list over here. So 1 is going to be the first, 2 the second, and so on. We're going to leave it as a TIFF format. Everything should be set, and I'll just hit Save. Now here it asks me if I want to promote the pixel depth so that it can store no data pixels. It basically wants to make this, instead of 8-bit data, into 16 or 32-bit data. I'm going to say no, do not promote the pixel depth. I want to keep it as 8-bit data so it's a, a small file. So I'm going to hit no, and it's going to go ahead and save that file and make it permanent. And I am going to add it as a layer. I'm now going to close the image analysis window. We're done with it. and we've. I can come through and I can now remove everything else from my table of contents. And we've got this one nice stacked image that has Middlebury right in the center of it. Now the final thing I'm going to do here is to basically clean up after myself. Now that I've got this stacked image, I don't need any of those intermediate files. And this is pretty good. Anytime you've processed an image, you always want to do this. Go to Art Catalog. Go into your GG Students folder and just delete anything that's left behind that you don't want anymore. And in this case, well, I think I will go ahead and delete all of these individual Landsat bands um, because I don't really need them anymore now that I've got the composite. And you have to do that one by one, just highlighting it and going delete, yes, delete, yes, delete, yes, delete, yes. All right, and so on and so forth. You might want to hang on to your panchromatic band, band 8, uh, which you might need later. And of course, if you think you're going to need these files later, you probably don't want to delete them. Um, OK, thanks a lot for listening, everybody. Uh, join us for our next video where we'll talk about RGB color and contrast stretching.